What's up guys, we're going to be running a cross-site scripting attack, but we're going to be using a jQuery sync. And this is really just to show you that there's a wide variety of possible syncs for a cross-site scripting attack. It doesn't have to be vanilla JavaScript. If you don't know jQuery, it's fairly similar to a JavaScript framework, but it's more of a helper library. It's not considered a full framework but it allows us to manipulate the DOM without using verbose vanilla JavaScript. And, you know, we're not saying there's anything wrong with vanilla JavaScript, but sometimes developers might want to write a few less lines of code, but hopefully it's not because they actually don't know how to write vanilla JavaScript. That would be unfortunate. So we're going to be making use of this lab, DOM cross-site scripting in jQuery anchor href attribute sync, using location.search source. Then we're given some instructions here. It says to solve this lab, make the backlink alert document.cookie. All right, fine. Let's take a look at the lab. Now we know there's a vulnerable backlink. So the first step here really is to identify where that vulnerable backlink is. It might take a few minutes of clicking around the page to find out what we're looking for. I already know where it is. So I'm going to jump straight there. It's in this submit feedback section. So we can submit the feedback form, but we also have an option to return to the previous page. But note that's been coded as part of the page. It's not the backlink in the browser, which we can manipulate the functionality of, but that's not what this is. This has been added to the page by the developer. And obviously the function of that is also going to be controlled by the developer. So let's explore what they've done here. And we're going to inspect that backlink. So it's an anchor tag or hyperlink, if you prefer, has the ID of backlink, and then it has the attribute href. So this is where the link's going to take us. And we can see if we click on that, we're just going to be navigated to forward slash. So the home directory of the site. Question is, how did that href attribute get there? Now, of course, sometimes it might be part of the original HTTP response from the server, in which case there's really not a lot we can do to actually change it, at least not if we want to execute arbitrary JavaScript. But if we check out this script tag, we'll see that that element was actually placed there by jQuery, which was manipulating the DOM after receiving the HTTP response from the server. So we've got a function being defined there. And it's presumably being executed straight away. And you can see we've got this dollar sign. So what is this dollar sign? It doesn't look really very much like JavaScript. Well, this is because it's part of the jQuery library. And what this dollar sign is, is a selector. It helps us to select certain elements. If you've worked with CSS, you'll be familiar with this idea. So when we have the dollar sign selector, then in brackets, we have this param with hashtag backlink. If you're familiar with CSS, you'll know that this is selecting the element with the ID of backlink. Well, guess what? That's the element we've just looked at that has that href attribute. It's then calling a jQuery function dot ATTR, which is actually going to assign that href attribute to the value given in the second param here. Now, what is the value given currently? Well, it's new URL search params which is a JavaScript class, which is being initiated here into an object. And it's taking in the param window.location.search. So that's everything in the URL bar after the question mark. So at the moment it reads return path equals forward slash. So that's a pretty big clue as well. Then it's getting the value of the key return path. So we've just seen it's a forward slash. In other words, what is this jQuery function doing? It's looking in the URL. It's looking for the param with the key return path. It's taking the value, so forward slash in this case. Then it's manipulating the DOM so that the anchor tag that we've looked at has the href value set to that value that's being passed under the return path key in the query string. So forward slash in this case. Well, what we can really see then is that the href value is being directly determined by the param that's being passed as part of that query string under the return path key. So we can actually manipulate that. And it means that we can control the value of that href attribute. 
So the question is, what do we want to set it to? Now, in previous cross-site scripting attacks, we've done things like added script tags. We've done things like added an image tag with a source of zero. And then when that errors out, we call the alert function. But it's really important to consider the sync and the context of where we're injecting into. So you can see the context here is really that we are inside that href attribute. And we're not really going to be able to break out of that because of the way that jQuery works. So the question is, can we execute JavaScript from inside a href attribute? And the answer is actually yes. And it's not necessarily something that all developers are aware of because it involves something that's considered bad practice by developers in general. And that is if we have an anchor tag and inside the href, we have JavaScript colon followed by some JavaScript, that JavaScript will be executed directly. So normally the way we think about anchor tags is if the user clicks on the anchor tag, then the browser is going to redirect to the URL contained in the href attribute. But what's going to happen in this case is rather than visit a different URL, when the user clicks on the anchor tag, it's going to execute directly the JavaScript that's contained in the href attribute. Now, why is this considered bad practice for developers? Is it because this is insecure? Well, no, the answer is actually something a lot less interesting. And that is developers are concerned that this doesn't allow for proper separation of concerns. So we end up with JavaScript mixed in to our HTML, which according to many developers is a bad thing. But in reality, it's not that bad. It just depends how you personally want to arrange your code. And the reason why I mention this is because most developers go on a journey where they have everything mixed together. They have PHP, HTML, JavaScript all mixed together in one document. Someone comes along and says, hey, you can't do that. That's really bad spaghetti code. You need to mix everything into separate documents. So you need to have one for HTML, one for CSS, one for JavaScript, one for PHP. So we then, as the developer, painstakingly separate everything. And then we get to the next level of our development where we start using frameworks. For example, we use something like Laravel if we're a PHP developer. And then we run across these things called templating engines, which essentially mix everything back together. So for example, Laravel can make use of a templating engine called Blade, where we essentially just mix PHP and HTML in a single document. If we take a popular JavaScript framework like Vue.js, well, if you look at a .view file, it's essentially JavaScript, HTML, and CSS all mixed into one file. So you can see it's a very ironic journey where we mix everything, we're told off for mixing everything, so we separate everything, then we get really advanced and then just mix everything again. So you can see although there's a lot of hatred and there's going to be developers telling you you should never use JavaScript colon inside a href attribute, it's realistically down to the way that you personally want to organize your code. There's not a right or wrong here, and this is not necessarily an insecure way of using JavaScript. But because it's considered bad practice, even if it's for the wrong reasons, most developers don't know that you can just pass JavaScript directly as part of a href attribute on an anchor tag. Anyway, we're going to do that right now. It's very useful for a hacker to know this kind of thing. Well, we were given fairly explicit instructions by the lab. That is, we want to alert document.cookie. So let's just alert document.cookie. We don't need any script tags in this case. Now, it immediately tells us we've solved the lab, which is a little bit disappointing because we haven't actually seen the exploit. The lab's saying, hey, yeah, you've understood what to do here, but we actually want to see the exploit in practice. So let's now click on that back button. Before we do that, let's just inspect how the DOM has been manipulated. So we've got anchor tag, ID equals backlink, href attribute equals JavaScript colon, alert document dot cookie. So when we click on that anchor tag, that JavaScript is going to be executed. There we go. I'm assuming there's 
no actual document.cookie, which is why the alert pop-up is blank here. The reason why they specifically want document.cookie is just because it's a signal to the server that you've successfully passed the lab. So that's why they've asked for that explicitly, but you can see there's no actual cookie being passed back by the alert function here in this case. So hopefully if there's one takeaway, it's that there are potentially hundreds of different syncs that can be made use of in cross-site scripting attacks. And it doesn't just have to be vanilla JavaScript. You can see here that we've used a sync with jQuery. And we've also learned how we can execute JavaScript as part of a href attribute. Hope it was helpful, guys. Thanks very much for watching.